Hello. Happy almost the end of March. Happy spring. We are moving into week 13. Yes, 13 of 2022. Holy moly. It is about 11 o'clock Sunday night. So I figured I would do my opening clip for this week. So I'm not having to play catch up <laughs> to start up. So I have a couple book updates and then we'll go from there. So Saturday, yesterday, I watched Bridgerton season two. There is a vlog of my very emotional immediate thoughts while watching it. I do want to give it a day or so more and just kind of reflect on it. Maybe uh, try to talk to, because I talk with my boss about everything and anything. So I might chat with her a little bit about it and just to kind of help kind of formulate my thoughts on it in a little bit more of a cohesive manner. I have watched Jessen's video and Jen's video and I want to watch a couple other um, videos just so I can temper myself a little bit better. But I was really emotional during it. <laughs> which doesn't surprise me, but I think I want to film a clip at least um, at the beginning that's just like, just so you know, I get super emotional. And in the moment, I was a little harsh on some things, but, but I feel like I should leave them in because those were my true in the moment feelings, even if I didn't articulate them well. But and so after that, I picked up the Viscount Who Loved Me, because my biggest thing about season two, which you'll see, is it got to a point where I just was like, those are not my characters. These are my characters. And so I just needed that feel good historical romance vibes. And so I picked up the Viscount Who Loved Me. I am on... I can find it. Chapter five. That's 75 pages in. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. This is a reread for me. Should I have picked up a different book last night? Yes, but I did not. I picked up this, but that's okay. I didn't read too much because it was pretty late by the time I got through everything and filmed my clips. And I did because I binged the whole series in one setting <sighs> during the beginning of it between each episode, I'd go and switch my laundry. So I was still doing things. And then I made sure after each episode to kind of get up and walk around the house and just not sit in the same position. And I usually can't sit in the same position for very long. Anyway, if you'll notice in my vlog, I'm almost in a different position every single time, but Except for maybe the last couple because I came back to my chair here on the floor. But anyway, so I picked this back up. This is probably going to be a little bit of a slower reread for me because I have a book I have to finish by Tuesday. But we will talk about that book in a second. But yeah, so I started my reread of The Viscount Who Loved Me. And I might not film my clip for Bridgerton until after I finish this to kind of help formulate my thoughts a little bit better. I know that there's some people who are going to do comparison videos and things like that, but I'm just going to stick with the one that's like my vlog and that'll be up sometime in April because I wanted to give time because I'm not going to do like a non-spoiler and spoiler one or anything like that. So I wanted to give people time to watch it at their own pace because I know not everybody can just sit and binge it in a day. So there's that. Um, let us do the calendar and then we'll talk about this, the other book that I picked up. So we'll do our kind of beginning blurb that we always do. I am playing the quest calendar 2022 the gates of Terralon. This is a mostly daily calendar by Sundial Games. Their link is down below. 
They also did a Kickstarter version for the 2023 version, and I can't remember what the title of it is, or maybe they haven't released the title yet, but it is a like sci-fi space opera theme. And we are, so on Friday, after that, we had a guy die that we were helping with, we got his staff. So today, we will see what's going on. Also, we are playing as Savani Moonchaser. She is a feline monk. So let us see what this weekend is. Okay. Alright, demons are still attacking. Okay. You hear more screaming in the distance. The fairgrounds have been cleared of demons, but they have made their way into the city. Perhaps you can put the World Watcher's staff to use. Use the staff to banish the demons. Okay. So. All right, so. For the staff, we are learning how to use the staff. So we had learned on Friday that it can be used to banish an enemy to its home realm. So here, before each of, because we are going to, based on this table here, there are three demons. And so we are going to make a wisdom attack, and that allows us to use the magic of the staff. And... It's a wisdom roll to banish it. And then if it does not get banished, we do an attack and damage roll. So it'll be one round for each of the three demons. And then I pulled out our notes from, from the previous day. And so if we do banish an enemy, it will drain our health by one. But it will also give us a plus one that we can use on any future dice roll. And they can accumulate and stack. So we will have to just kind of keep track of those. And I will have to remember that if we successfully banish something to take a hit point and, but also save our plus ones. So I will set that back over here and we will get going on our dice. When I pull this out, I went to my brother's today. My sister's down. Uh, she lives up on the northern end of Wyoming and she was down in Cheyenne doing training for some work thing so we were able to meet up today and play some board games so we played betrayal at the house on the hill i think and we got the like weird tentacle monster and my sister was the tentacle monster and she won <laughs> because where we needed to get to defeat the tentacle monster was behind like this room where we had to like pass a really high sanity roll and if you don't then you get stuck in this room and so it was just <laughs> we just basically waited for her to finally be able to kill us um and then we played we tried uh tiny epic dungeons which is their latest uh game and it's by the tiny epic game people and they have a lot of different types of games um I didn't film any b-roll clip because I was going to and then it just got sucked into it because this was the first time that we were playing tiny epic dungeons that I wanted to make sure that we like were getting it right and getting the rules straight but anyway so our wisdom roll is first and our wisdom roll is a plus one and I rolled a three so that's a four so we do not banish the demon so now we do our own attack roll and we are at a plus five and that is an 18 so 23 so we hit so i need to do damage <coughs> excuse me and that is a seven so we needed a six or more so the first demon is dead and now on to demon two so wisdom roll that's a 15 so that's a 16 Okay, so we needed a 15, so we banished the demon back to its home realm. It is defeated. Reduce your health by one and gain one bonus to any future dice roll. So we are going to take a damage. And then I'm going to make just a note from the staff 
that we have one check mark. Okay, so that is two demons officially defeated, and the third and final demon. Ah! Okay. <laughs> I dropped my little tiny dice, uh, or my die, because it was just the one. And when I went to reach for it, I grabbed the microphone cord, and everything came falling. So <laughs> let's work on this third demon. So if you're not in the exact same spot, I'm sorry. Okay, so our wisdom roll is a 9 that time, so that's only a 10, and that is not enough, so we do not banish him. So we will attack, and that is a 19, so we are at a 24, um, and that is enough to hit. We needed a 13, so I will roll damage, and that is an 8, and we needed the 7 or more, so perfect. So... We have killed the third demon, so we've killed all three demons, so we gain three gold. And things are all moved around now, so. Holy cow, we are like stocking up on gold. We've got 59 gold. But I guess we got 10 for doing things, so that's cool. All right, 59. And that is it for today at least for the quest calendar. Let me just kind of stick some of this back in here. I set my camera on my paper. Okay. <laughs> just, I'm just a wreck guys, I'm just a wreck. Okay. Book number two. So, because I knew I was like freaking out here, um, or not freaking out, but Tuesday is the Smart Women Read Romance exclusive Patreon review. Although it sounds like my sister might still be in Cheyenne on Tuesday. So now we might meet <laughs> for dinner Tuesday, but it'll be like later because I don't know, I think my sister works till like 6.30 or something. Or no, she works till 5.30, so she wouldn't be in town till 6.30. So I don't know. And the game's on that night, and the Smart Women Rude Romance was originally supposed to be tomorrow. And now it is on Tuesday, and I'm just like, why is everything on freaking Tuesday? But, so I needed to start Burn by Suzanne Wright. The theme for this month was urban fantasy and this is the thing this is the book that won this is my first Suzanne Wright I believe I haven't double checked I know I know uh I had a lot of her like werewolf books books on my TBR but this is a demon shifter one so I started it tonight and I am only 16 percent in and our main heroine is Harper, and she is a sphinx demon. And so she has, but she is part of the Harper family. And her mother, I guess, is, she said something like her absentee mother or something like that. So I'm guessing her mother was a sphinx. But almost everybody else in her family is, or are, imps so she's kind of like the odd man out and then at one point she referenced a sphinx with no wings so I don't know if she's damaged or not or what exactly is going on but so um in this area it's set in Las Vegas the like head demon dude of this area it's not like really set up and organized normally but he's like a big business and he owns a bunch of like casinos and fast food but he owns a bunch of stuff he's like a billionaire he's known to be one of the most if not the uh top top uh most powerful demon in the world and nobody really knows what kind of demon he is and he runs the underground which is like a demon fighting ring um and oop when Harper is there because her cousin Chloe is going to fight and uh, the person that she's fighting ends up sending her like friends and little goonie people in 
and they beat up her cousin Chloe before the fight basically to make it easier on her and so because she was unfit to fight Harper kind of convinces her to let them trade places and there's like special logistics on how they can do that and so then Harper like kicks this girl's butt because I guess she can cause psychic damage to their soul and then she can also infuse hellfire into a blade so it seems like there's a lot of like the normal demon powers she is unable to master but she has like really good grips on very rare very hard to master powers so I'm not quite sure what's going on there but so she gets summoned to meet Nox because he's very intrigued by her and his demons very intrigued by her and it turns out that they are anchors to each other which is the demon kind of form of faded mates except it's a psychic connection and it doesn't mean that they're like romantic or sexual or anything like that it's all psychic and what it does is it helps keep the demons from going rogue and it helps allow the like human entity of the of them to stay the dominant personality because sometimes the demonic like think of it kind of like werewolf shifters where the demonic being inside of them can sometimes take control and if the demonic becomes more dominant than like the human aspect then they become rogue and um, they mentioned that when some people struggle with this and they feel like they're losing control they'll commit suicide or something to try to keep their demon from going rogue so they have met and they have found out that they are each other's anchor. She is not about that. She doesn't know what he is. She ha she's asked him a couple of times what he is. And so they're kind of playing this cat and mouse game where she, like her demon is absolutely terrified of him, but she just can't stop her mouth from saying things. And she's like, oh, oh God, why did I say that? But so I'm enjoying it so far. It's very intriguing. It took, I had to reread the first few pages because it was a lot of, like you jump right in and it's so different from some of the demon romances that I've read before that I was just like, wait, what's going on? Who's who? Because we've got her and her cousin and then they were talking about Chloe who's going to fight. And then they were talking about Franklin and I think Levi or some other dude. And those were the two guys fighting when we're like, we jump in. <laughs> so I was just like, well, too many people at once. And then they're talking about Knox and I'm just like, what is happening? But, but I got it now. <laughs> we're good. It was just a lot at first, <sighs> but yeah, so I'm going to get ready and go to bed and I'm going to try to read a little bit more and then I will be back tomorrow on Monday to update you on hopefully a lot more of this book. But we will see. I'm hoping to get it finished tomorrow because I'm not really going to have a chance to read on Tuesday. If I can make the live show and I really want to make the live show. But it's okay. I don't see my sister very often. I just i am such a homebody. Okay. Anyway. Good night. Happy Monday. I feel really weird. I still don't have my watch back. I finally got the stuff to send my Fitbit back. And I'm waiting to get the money for my recall. And then I can buy a new watch, but it feels so weird not having anything there. And I feel completely lost because... I have, I had the Fitbit Ionic, which is just going through recalls. And so I was able to do like timers and alarms and I just feel so completely lost without my watch. But anyway, I don't have too, too much right now. So we'll just kind of rush through the calendar and then we'll talk about burn. So yesterday we fought some more demons and using our fancy new staff that we got from the guy that died. Let us see what today is. Ooh, it looks like we've got wreckage from the attacks. So I don't know if the attacks are over or just the air and it's done in the area that we're at, but let's see. 
The demon attack finally passes, but there is still no calm in the city. The worst powder part of town got hit hard by the falling debris. The buildings here took so much damage that many have collapsed. People could still be inside and injured. So search for survivors among the wreckage. Roll a d20 plus intellect reminder investigator. Hmm. I don't think we have investigator. We do not. So, ah, ah, okay, alrighty, so, our intellect is a minus one, but we rolled a 19, nice, so 18, okay, so 15 or more, amongst the smoke and rubble, you find a young little girl who hid when the fighting started. You also find an old man who cannot move fast enough to get out in time when the building began to collapse. Under a pile of bricks and dust, you pull out a young puppy. It was lucky to not have been injured. Its owners are so grateful that they give you five gold. So we saved a little girl, we saved an old man, and we saved a puppy. And we got five gold. So, heck yeah. And that's it for calendar today. Super easy, super easy. So let me just put my stuff back here. So I got a package today and I had mentioned in last week's vlog that I <clears throat> ordered the hardback special edition of the Duke and I that is a Walmart exclusive and they did not have it in my store so I had to place an order online. So I got that and a tarot deck so I could qualify for free shipping. And a package came today but they're in two separate packages. so. We'll see what today's is. I, oh my God, I hate these packages. Okay. So, whoa, whoa. Okay. This is the tarot deck. I got the mystical cats tarot. I thought this might've, might've been the Duke and I, because this is absolutely ginormous. Holy cow. Why is it so big? Why is it so big? All right, we'll open it. I'm excited. I was, I've been kind of getting away and you can't find all of them online, but um, there are a couple of websites online that show you all of the cards in a deck, which is really nice. And when I was looking at getting a new deck, I'm kind of getting away from, I have a couple of cards, uh, pip deck, pip card decks for the minor arcana. And I'm just kind of getting away from them because I like, I like the pretty pictures. So it's a magnetic class and this is by Luna Weatherstone and the art is by Mickey Mueller, look at that catty. But I looked up pictures of some of the minor arcana from this deck and a couple of the others I was looking forward to. And this one is not a pip deck. So this is what it looks like when it opens. So we'll pull. So here's our, oh my gosh. <laughs> this is so much for just one little deck. Oh my gosh. Okay, and the cards are sealed. So I'm just going to look, glance through this. Whoa. You can tell it's new because you could hear all the like paper separate when I did that. Um, so we've got an about them. Okay. This is a Llewellyn deck. The cat mysteries, the cat clans. Spreads, and then there's some sketches for Mickey Mueller's old wooden art table. So, okay, so there is there is some changes to the deck. So, and it lists the table here. And since I don't really have much to update today, we'll go through this real quick. So things that have changed is the fool is now the cat. The magician is cat magic. The high priestess is the priestess. 
The Hierophant is now the Priest. The Wheel of Fortune is just the wheel. Justice is consequences. The Hanged Man is the floating cat. Temperance is grace. The Devil is demon cat. The Star is stars. The Moon is moon. The Sun is sun. Judgment is good kitty. And then... For our Minor Arcana suits, they just, instead of doing wands, cups, swords, pentacles, it went with the element associated. So wands are fire, cups are water, uh, pentacles are earth, and swords are air. And there is that. And then it looks like it goes over the Major Arcana and the Minor Arcana, and it calls it the Story of the Cats. And then the back portion, it said the appendix was sketches. Oh, and spreads. Okay, so there's a decision making at the threshold. Shield of Sekhmet. Sekhmet's the Egyptian goddess of cats. So that's a three card one. Council of five tigers. Nine lives spread. Oh my gosh, look at this pretty picture. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Interesting. I might have to do this spread. That's interesting. Okay, and then it looks like there's some fun sketches that are in the back. So that'll be, that'll be fun to like sit with. But let us look at the deck. Okay, I got it unwrapped. And here is the back. Super pretty. This seems like to have a, a gloss finish, but it's not super high. Oh my gosh. So here's the fool. This is the cat. I'm just going to kind of look through real quick and just show you some. <gasps> look at the empress. She's got kittens. Oh my goodness. The priest is an Egyptian cat. And it looks like in the temple to Sekhmet. <laughs> oh my god, I love, I love this deck. The chariot is a cat being towed by Dalmatians. <laughs> oh my gosh. And strength is a cat being covered in birds. Oh my gosh. And this is perfect for strength. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Focus. There we go. Oh my goodness. Oh. oh my gosh. Oh. Mm. This is the death card. But it could have been a lot more gruesome. I like, like, the Ghosts of the Nine Lives. Yep, and there is nine ghosts. Hmm. If, but if there had to be a death card with a dead cat on it, that's a little better <laughs> than what could have happened. I mean, just kind of quickly go... <laughs> And look at the sun card. <laughs> you got cats laying there, cats laying there, cats laying there. <laughs> oh my god, this is my new favorite deck. Oh my gosh. Okay, so here, so we are at fire first. So this is wands. Let me just go through see I'll find a cute one. Oh, that's <laughs> eat a fire has a cat messing up the rug <laughs> oh my god I, I love it I love it okay <sighs> fire okay oh so instead of page knight queen king we have kitten then tom and then queen and king. Okay, so now we're at cups. So this is two of C. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my 
gosh. Oh my gosh. I love this. I love this. All right. What is nine of C? Oh. Look at the ten of C. This is the ATA card. Look at it. Oh my gosh, a sea kitten. Oh, I love these. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now we have sky. So this is swords. Three of sky. Four of sky. Five. Six. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh. I love this for Sky Kitten. Mm. I love that. Okay, now for Pentacles. So this is Two of Earth. Aww. Six of Earth is the mama and the kittens. Mm, that is so cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Ten of Earth has cats all over the place. Cats, cats, some more cats. Oh my gosh. And the Earth, Tom. Oh. I love it. I absolutely love it. Oh, this is one of my favorite decks, but you know, it's hard to go wrong with kitties. But I'm super excited, and the new moon is later this week, so I will definitely be putting them out. I don't really do deck interview spreads, at least I haven't <laughs> lately here with any of them, but I was thinking I might go through all of my tarot decks and maybe once a week, one a week, or a couple of weeks, or just kind of pick a day to do a deck interview spread, and then I can log them somewhere. And then I can also kind of keep track of what decks I have, which I, I know off the top of my head, most of the decks that I have, but I love it. This is so cute. So freaking cute. Oh, I love them. I love them. Kitties make me happy. I am a cat person. I love dogs too, but I am 100% a kitty person. But anyway, <laughs> we'll stop talking about cats and tarot. So I am reading Burn. I need to finish it tonight because tomorrow is the Smart Women Read Romance live show. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it to the live show because plans have changed and now everything in the world is planned on Tuesday. But I at least wanted to finish it tonight. So I am... 26% in. I'm at the beginning of chapter six and I'm still enjoying it. I'm still kind of trying to figure out what exactly how this works. I'm not sure if this is set in like if she has an overarching universe or something and if this series is meant to be read after other series or it's interconnected with other series but I feel like kind of like we were thrown in the in the pan while it was hot and it's like ah find your bearings so i'm not 100 percent sure how i feel yet i'm definitely intrigued in the demon i guess mythos shit that she's creating in this book is certainly interesting i am finding it a little tough to connect with nox the hero but mostly because or i guess i feel like this is kind of steamy and it could be steamy for some people but for me it feels more like we're just constantly being told that there's this tension between Knox and Harper and that his you know he has almost like the demonic succubus incubus kind of attraction thing going on so he's just so attracted to everybody and there's this aura that he has that just makes everybody want to drop their panties right away and it's like this huge whole thing about how irresistible he is 
but I don't actually feel like he is, if that makes sense. I feel like we're more like it's being told and not shown. So I don't know. I'm kind of struggling with it slightly. And there are moments where he, and this is his character. He is very controlling and it's known that he's controlling. And that's part of why Harper is balking against him so much, but I don't know. I just, he seems a little too much and it's almost coming across at times more manip manipulation than controlling, which I guess can kind of be the same thing, but I don't, I don't know. Like I like alphas and I can handle alpha holes, but there's just something that I'm not connecting with Knox on. And maybe part of it is because he is so like such a mystery and closed off and he asks Harper all of these personal questions that she doesn't want to answer but he somehow finagles in her into giving away answers and then in her brain she's like crap why did I say that but yet she asks him one personal question and he just like shuts her down and even then when she is allowed to ask him personal questions it is nowhere near as intrusive as the ones that he asks asks her so I'm just I'm getting a little frustrated with that because I feel like he's push, push, pushing. And while Harper is pushing back, she's still kind of giving in to him. So I don't know. I don't know. I love, absolutely love Harper's grandmother, Jolene. She is, she just sounds awesome. And she's a spitfire. And she just, she is so freaking cool and I, I love her grandmother. She is amazing. <sighs> a couple of her, I also like, she's a tattoo artist and I'm liking her friends or her friends slash co-workers who also work at the tattoo place. And one of them, I guess, is a Hellcat. And then one of Knox's Sentinels is a hellhound <laughs> and so like when she sees him because he's kind of become harper's like driver slash bodyguard dude and then when this hellcat sees him she like kisses at him <laughs> and so it's just like yeah hellcat and then it's like hellcats and hellhounds don't really get along but that's another thing the writing style is slightly odd because sometimes we're in it's i feel like it's all third pov or it's, I don't, or, yeah. Mm hmm Third person, per, yeah, it's all in, like, third person. But sometimes we're in Harper's perspective. And sometimes we're in Knox's perspective. And there's no rare, real clear break. It'll happen, like, in the middle of a paragraph. Or from one little paragraph to the next. But they're all fairly short paragraphs. Or it's after a dialogue scene. And so it'll take me a second to realize that the perspective has switched to the other character. And then sometimes there's like fourth breaking wall stuff happening, which I've read it done well before, but I feel like because it's switching indeterminately between Knox's and Harper's POV, sometimes in like, I just, and then sometimes it's third breaking and then it almost sounds, and then sometimes when, or, when it's fourth wall breaking, sometimes it even sounds more like a narrator or the author is telling us this, not Knox or Harper. So it's just a really, I don't know, I'm struggling. I'm slightly struggling with the writing style, I guess. But I'm still intrigued and I definitely will <laughs> push through as much as I can. It's definitely like I don't want to DNF it. Not that I ever DNF anything. I've only technically DNF'd one book. But I don't know. I'm intrigued to see what other people... I know other people have read some of her werewolf bo books last year and really liked them. And um, Smart Women Read Romance did a podcast episode on one of them. And so... And she's been on my TBR for a while as a... Um, it wasn't this one. It was the werewolf pack books. 
that I put on that I found a couple years ago when I went through like my werewolf binge phase and I don't know the writing style just isn't quite clicking with me and maybe it's my version of the ebook and I did I did see though that somebody posted on the patreon that they couldn't join the live show and that they read it via audiobook and that they struggled with the audiobook so maybe it wasn't the audiobook maybe it was the writing style but I don't remember I just remember them saying that they didn't like the audiobook or they struggled with the audiobook or something like that so I don't know we'll see hopefully I'll be able to make the live show tomorrow to see what kind of happens but or to see what other people thought but anyway, yeah, so that's where I'm at. I'm going to get back to reading and I have a surprise video that's going up tomorrow. I was going to shift my Wednesday vlogs to Thursday this week since I have an extra video going up tomorrow and Tuesday, but I guess I can tell you because this will be out after it's up, but I did a quarter two new release, like new romance releases video. And I made like little graphics and stuff for it and filmed that this weekend. So that's going up. But I feel like I should just keep my vlogs up on Wednesdays and just leave it like that. Unless I absolutely like. Like because I, 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 I was on the ball and that was up and ready to go Friday night because I was on it. But I want to try to get ahead and keep things going. So I might just leave it for Saturday or for Wednesday. And then just have the bonus one on Tuesday instead of doing Tuesday, Thursday. But by the time you're watching this, both of them are already up. So I hope you watch them. And if not, I hope you will and enjoyed them and all that. But anyway, I'm going to stop rambling at you. I'm going to get back to reading and I will see you all soon. Happy Tuesday. It is Tuesday, March 29th. It is almost nine o'clock but I wanted to do a little bit of an update. Um, I did finish Burn by Suzanne Wright. This is the first book in her Dark in You series, which is a demon series. I finished it when I looked up at the clock. There was five minutes <laughs> until the live show tonight. So just in time. And I'm going to rate it during the live I said three stars but as I've kind of sat in my feelings for a little bit I think I'm gonna give it three stars and instead of 3.5 I there were definitely parts that were intriguing I was very intrigued by like the demonic setup and how demons and the mythos that Suzanne was creating but there was, first of all, there was too much plot going in. I also really, really struggled with getting into the story. I might have mentioned it before, but I just, I don't know. It was hard for me to connect. I connected more with Harper than Knox, but I could not connect with Knox at all. There were a lot a lot of steamy scenes but they all just felt like being to me there was no emotional connection they didn't really feel intimate in them and while the words were steamy they didn't feel steamy to me and I didn't really like it I also didn't like that every time they got intimate Harper would ask or something from Knox either to stop you know to stop doing something it was too much she was too sensitive or to stop teasing her and to just you know let her finish or you know different different little things like that and he just every single time he would push it and he wouldn't give her what she asked for he wouldn't give her what she wanted because he felt he knew better and he knew how far to push her which is fine at times but every single scene was like this there was never a moment where 
he pulled back and gave her what she wanted. Um, there was a time when they were doing it on her birthday and she's like, please just, she says, please just let me come or something like that. And he's just like, no, not yet. You'll, you'll do, you'll come when I say you'll come kind of a thing. And she's just like, not even on my birthday. And he's just like, you can take it. And it's just, while I like the elfiness, it was a little too much. It was a little too overbearing. And we never, not once, saw a soft side of him. I feel like Harper was, you know, she's a badass. She was very strong. She was very capable. And we saw some of her soft moments and we saw her kind of not necessarily change, but adapt and adjust her life to now being not only anchors with Knox, but then they also become mates. And I feel like he didn't have any sort of evolution or change at all or any adaptability. Like every time, like he would be the one to bring up compromise and he would be the one to do this and he would be the one to do that. And he would push her and she would kind of push him back, but she would, uh, but at the same time, Harper was also being like, I hate when you push me. So I know what it's like and how you probably aren't going to like it if I push you or you will pull back. Like I really want to do if I push you the same way you're pushing me. And we just never kind of got past that. Now, I do know that the first, um, someone during the live show mentioned that the first couple books are about Knox and Harper, and then it changes to the other couple. So I don't know if that's something that over the books evolves, but as intrigued as I am by the demon stuff, there was just too much. We had political stuff. We had exes from both sides against both of them like bitter exes there was only the one for harper there were a few for Knox. then we had the issues with her and her parents and then the issue with Knox's childhood friends and then the whole political stuff and they're supposed to be like a monarch and i it, it just was like way too much and i don't know i just didn't feel the connection. I felt the connection from Harper more, but even then it didn't feel like it more felt to me like she was still falling in love with him and not in love with him. Like she says at the end. So I don't, I am intrigued. I know, um, some of her werewolf books, other people that I like or that I know and trust their judgment on have liked her books and the werewolf, her werewolf series have have been on my TBR for a while now, but uh, with the writing style paired with kind of how the character development worked in this, I'm more hesitant to pick them up. I probably will try them at some point, but it's not on the top of my list. But so yeah, burn three stars. <laughs> and there's that. So that is all I have book wise. So let's do the calendar. Let me pull it all over here. And it seemed like most everybody in the live show was kind of in the three star range too. So that was, I felt better not being like, oh, this wasn't for me. So uh, yesterday we dealt with uh, the rebel in some of the areas in the town that were kind of destroyed by the demon's attack. And so let us see what is going on today. Oh, it looks like, okay, so it looks like the attack is mostly over. So now we are, it looks like a hospital medic kind of tent. So officials in the city work quickly to set up a hospital tent to aid in the recovery of citizens. You pay a visit to get some much needed healing. So number one is take a rest and number two is talk to some of the injured people. Cool. And we do have a little bit of damage, not too much, but might as well. So we will, oh, but we also get our expended chi back. So we will heal health to full and gain all expended uses of abilities, which 
we don't really have any and I will get rid of our damage uh, regain all spell points and chi points we just use the one chi point so that's done remove the poisoned condition and curse condition we don't have that uh, we can change our equipment if we like but we're gonna we just have the two things so we're gonna leave that as is and then remove a single no mod negative modifier cost from a previous death we do not have that as well so that's fine so number one is done so number two is talk to some of the injured people you walk around the room and converse with the various, t various townsfolk here. Some recall you from the Tournament of Lords, which puts a smile on their faces. Some saw your bravery in battle and offer a sincere thanks. One gentleman, dressed as a guard, looks up from the bed of his young daughter. He approaches you. Okay. I must offer my deepest thanks for your help in this attack. I am Sir Henry Brighton of the King's Guard. I was fighting on the front line and could not reach my daughter Marissa to protect her. She tells me you fought off one of the demons that was about to take her. She is my world, and if it weren't for you, she would not be here. You should go speak to the commander of the King's Guard, Arthur Thornburg. With what happens here today, he put out a request for all able fighters to assemble and present themselves for service to King Roderick. They mean to discern the nature of the attacks and strike next. You handled yourself honorably in the Tournament of Lords, and you fought bravely today. The world could use you before we are attacked again. That's fun. So no rolls today, but... We got some good plot. We got some good plot storyline movement. So, okay. Okay. That's fun. Okay, cool. That was fun. That was good. Good 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 moving forward in the plot. So, I liked that. We got we got a little bit more story time, which is always fun. So, there is that. Now, I was debating after I finished Burn, I've got, I'm in the second intermission of the Av show. They're playing the Calgary Flames tonight. We're tied 1-1. So we still have the third period to go. Um, and I am debating. I really want to pick back up the Viscount who loved me. I'm in the shadows here. And try to finish this before the end of the month. But I also... My reading has been super slow again this month. And I feel like I'm just going to be a slower reader this year based on what's going on because of different activities I've picked up. But I was also thinking of picking up some other things. I did finally pull up my email today and I got the bonus epilogue short story from Elsie Silver that has... Billy and Vaughn's wedding and that takes place between books three and four of the Gold Rush Ranch series but it's the marriage of Billy and Vaughn who are the couple from the first book off to the races and then there's also a bonus epilogue with Griffin and Nadia who are the couple in book four a false start and I think it the note said it was two years later. So I got I got it through the book funnel that was in the newsletter link. And so I sent them to my Kindle. So I have those sitting on my Kindle. And then I also got something else today. I got a free Fae book from one of the uh, fantasy authors that I started following after Pharaoh Feb. I joined up for her newsletter and she sent some sort of fantasy Fae book to my Kindle. I would grab it, but it's charging because it <laughs> it gave me the 5% left when I was finishing burn earlier. So I plugged it in. Um, but so I'm thinking about picking up that. But I also want to pick up Parks and Provocation by Juliet Cross. Because right now, if I finish, if I read it next, um, my when I would have it scheduled for the review to be out would be the day before the release date or it was on release date. But I think I want to finish the Viscount Who Loved Me first and then jump to that because I've already started it. Um, I am 60, 71 pages in. So, but it's a reread, so I feel like I could get through it fairly quickly. I don't have anything else I really have to pick up the rest of the week. I do have um, a couple books I need to pick up this weekend for um, 
for my first read along that I have to take care of in April. So I think I'm going to try to finish this and then hopefully if not, and then we'll see what happens after I finish the bicamel dummy, but I'd at least like to finish this so it can go on March, March's stats. But so yeah, I think I'm going to pick this back up tonight. I'm in the shadows here and finish it the or not finish it, but read it during the rest of the avalanche game. And then we'll go from there. But I probably won't do too many updates during this because it is a reread. So, and I feel like most everybody knows the plot of it. But yeah, I'm going to pick it back up and I'm going to read more. And hopefully we win this game. The Calgary are in our conference they might even be in our division i feel like they are in our division because we played them in the playoffs in the first round a couple of years ago but yeah but it looks like intermission's over and they're getting ready to drop the puck so i'm gonna get back to that and i will update you all later bye happy hump day it is wednesday the 30th it's just before 7 p.m and I'm finally updating. First off, I just watched the first episode of Moon Knight. These Marvel TV shows are just knocking it out of the park. It's so good. It's so good. So good. I can't wait. I can't wait for more. It's... We didn't get too much. It was a lot of... I guess settling in with Steven and that personality. Cinematography was so great. And the way that they did him coming back after another personality had taken over. And I know this because I know a little bit about Moonlight. Moon Knight, I'm, I've been really excited for this show for a long time. And I'm so happy it's finally here. But... He has like multiple personalities, if you didn't know. And if you didn't know watching it, the way that it keeps you on edge of like, what the hell is going on? He keeps like losing time and he just pops back. And obviously, you know, something's going on. But knowing he has the different like personas, it's so well done. So freaking well done. I love it. Yeah. But I just wanted to do another couple updates. I was like, I should film it. Married at First Sight is on tonight, so I'm going to watch that next. But <clears throat> I had to talk about Moon Knight for a second because episode one and I'm, this is probably my most anticipated release of 2022, I think. Or at least as far as Marvel content goes. But <clears throat> anyway, um, I'll do a quick little haul, I guess. Um, so yesterday was the release day of Anna Harrington's A Relentless Lake Rake. It came today. I pre-ordered it and I got it today. But look at this gorgeous purple cover. And the purple dress. It's gorgeous. I love it. This is book four in her Lords of the Armory series. And then I want to say the fifth book is the last book. And I already have that one pre-ordered as, pre as well, but it's not out till the end of the month. But it's fun because the, I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell, but the letters, like they bump out. Oh, that's weird. Usually when they, when they're embossed like that, you can see the back on the, like you can see where it was stamped. But I guess it's just inked that way. Interesting. Anyway, so I got this. There was a lot of other books that <clears throat> were out yesterday on the 29th. But I planned on getting a couple of them in paperback at my local store. And they're still not, they're still not out today. So we'll see. I wanted to get like Eloisa James' new one and all that. But when I went when I stopped at Walmart on the way home, they did finally have Eva Lay's new one that came out, I want to say a couple months ago, but the Good Girl's Guide to Rakes. I know, I think this is the first in a new series. 
And it was the only one they had there. And look, it's all like jacked up. But I grabbed it because I know for a while there nobody could get could get this book because it was like because of printing issues. But yeah, this is the first book in her last chance scoundrels. But I've heard a lot of really good things about this book and a lot of really good things about Eva Lee. So I picked it up even though I haven't read this one yet. And then I also got today, finally showed up, um, the Duke and I Bridgerton Special Heart Edition by Julie Quinn. This is the Walmart exclusive. Of course, when I stopped at Walmart today, my Walmart finally has the paperback in stock, or the hardback in stock, and I was just like... The book section in my local Walmart is absolutely horrendous. The book... The third party book stalker, whoever it is, doesn't, isn't there ever on release day. We'll be lucky if when I do my grocery shopping, if she's even showed up, I, I'm assuming it's a she. It's, it's probably not a she, but we're going with she. But anyway, so this is the Walmart exclusive, but because I had to get it ordered, all of the freaking corners are all banged up. So that's frustrating, but I don't know. I might... And see what condition next time I'm there <laughs> the other hardbacks are in and get one and then return and then replace them well the front covers like taped to itself too oh, it looks like it got wet or something or it's from the glue when they glue it together I don't know but anyway and her face looks weird maybe it's just me Her face looks weird to me. It looks... It looks like it's like... Like here's where her face is supposed to be and it's like here. It looks weird. <laughs> I didn't notice a like weirdness with the artwork on the front of the other one. But this one looks weird. So I don't know. Maybe this one printed weird. I don't know. But anyway. I have it, whatever, <laughs> but I'm excited about these two for sure. Um, so I guess we'll stick with historicals. I am, let me pull it out of my bag here. I'm going to say I'm about 200 pages in. Yes, I am on page 199, chapter 13. I'll pop out my bookmark. So I'm just over halfway through the, Vic the Viscount Who Loved Me. I mean, I don't know what else I can say. This is just, this reread has just been amazing and I haven't been able to put it down last night. I was up super late reading and I just, it's amazing. It's amazing. And I was thinking today at work um, that I don't know if this is the first book because this book has my favorite trope, which is wrong sibling, but I don't know if it's the first one I read with wrong sibling or if it's the first one I read that was well done, but it'd be interesting to go through my Goodreads, although I didn't keep track of what I was putting, like I didn't start keeping track in Goodreads until a little bit more recently. Maybe 2015, which I guess now I say that is like seven years, but for as long as I've been reading, that's not that it's not as long, but it might have been the first like best one that I read, but I don't know. I did require a lot more thought, but I just, I just wondered today. I wonder if that, and maybe that's why I love the trip so much is because this one was done so well. I wanted books that gave me this sort of feeling and the same kind of like tension and angst between characters. So it could be very possible. But so yeah, this is great. I mean, last night I read the serpentine scene where Newton knocks Edwina in. Oh. And then we're at the house party and we had the Pall Mall scene, which is amazing. And then, you know, the scene in the office at the Bridgerton Musicale where Kate's hiding behind the desk. And then I 
Ugh. And then where I stopped was my favorite scene was in the library when at the during that Bridgerton house party when Kate the thunderstorm hits while she's looking for a book because she's having trouble sleeping. And then she hides under the desk and Anthony comes in and the second he just sees her absolutely terrified, he just, he can't handle it. And he immediately is like, Kate, Kate. And he's trying to comfort her, but he's not trying to cross too many boundaries, but he's just like, I need to touch you. I need to soothe you. I need to take care of you. And it's just like, oh. I love it. I love it. I love it. And that scene I feel like is one, and I get maybe there was too many other things going on that they didn't get, that they didn't want Kate to have another issue on top of everything else. And granted, Kate and Weena have a lot better relationship in this book. It's a lot more... Like, Kate does take care of her younger sister, and she is kind of taking charge and managing the men, is what they keep saying. But I feel like she's less overhanded about it, and there's no question that it isn't coming from a good place, which did not happen in, this, in the... But anyway, I just... That moment of... Where Kate is dealing, like, because we saw in Bridgerton season two when Anthony's freaking out and Kate was able to kind of help console and center and ground him. And we didn't really get to see Anthony do that for Kate. And this was, this was a big scene in the book where he's able to do that for her and he kind of drops his guard a little bit because he wants to take care of her and he needs her to just he just needs to take care of her and that's something that could have been even if they did it at the end where after her like horse accident or whatever but that caretaking scene where he just is putting he's just so worried about if she's okay and we saw him worried about her but we didn't get the caretaking aspect from Anthony and I needed that because that he is like, he can be a little bit of a jerk, and he is the head of his household, but he's the head of his household, and he does care in his own way for his entire family, and there is care taken there, and he does take care of everybody to the best of his ability, and I was missing that towards Kate in the, in the show, and I've been thinking now that I'm halfway through, and I've kind of been able to watch a couple of other videos and talk with a couple other people about their thoughts in Bridgerton of doing a more calmer, less emotional <laughs> wrap up of what I thought of the season. Now that I can have, now that I've had a chance to kind of step back and separate my emotions in the moment with it. But yeah, I still have a little bit of time before I have to film that, but I should get that before I lose my thoughts too much. But anyway, so there's that. <sighs> And that's all I'm reading right now. I'm going to try to finish that tonight, which should be doable. And then we'll see if I can cram in another book by the end of tomorrow to wrap up March. But we shall see. But I'm going to do the calendar real quick and then get to reading and watching Married at First Sight. So yesterday we found and helped out at a little hospital tent. So let us see what we're doing today. Oh, that's right. We ran into that guard guy. And he sent us to go meet with, like, the king's guard or something like that. So let's see what it says. The castle is busy today with everything going on. Soldiers are on careful watch and the staff is busy hustling around, carrying out orders. You stand before King Roderick of Greycliff and his counselors. Number one, hear King Roderick's instructions. Number two, conduct yourself according to court traditions. Roll d20 plus charisma. Reminder student. Well, we are not charismatic at all. <laughs> but are we a student? Uh, we are not a student. But that's okay. Alright. I'm gonna get my ass out. Wah! 
controller. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So number one is hear the instructions. Okay. Thank you for answering my summons. This is truly a dark day for the city of Greycliff. We cannot stand by as victims when we have been attacked in such a manner. The world must see us as a force of righteousness and justice in the face of adversity. You have proven your skill in the Tournament of Lords, and, and I am to understand that you fought bravely once the demons arrived. I must request that you go on a mission for the kingdom. My court wizard... Gregorium, Gregorium the Wise has heard word that a strange object arrived in the city along with the demons. It too fell from the sky. Go retrieve this object and return with it to Gregorum. It may answer questions as to the nature of the attack. Help Gregorum in his research in any way that he needs. You are now in service to the kingdom and its people. With that, we will provide our standard service fee. Perhaps you could use this to recruit some help or purchase supplies for your mission. Okay. All right, so we are going to roll our court. And our charisma is a minus one. It's a 17, so that's a 16. Okay. And we needed a 15 or more. I was like, if it's close to the top one... We might use our bonus plus one that we have that we can use at any time because we've only banished one th demon with the magic staff thing, but we don't need it. You are flawless in your mannerisms, formalities, and traditions. The council believes that you must have operated in a court before and are well educated. Your presentation commands the highest respect. With that comes trust and a higher payment of 30 gold for your services. We are rolling in the gold. Woo -woo. Sweet. <laughs> we have 89 gold now. We are balling for sure. Okay, so I'm going to mark my gold increase here. And that is all I have to update for now. But yeah, so I will be back. Up. I probably won't do an update when I finish the Viscount Who Loves Me, but maybe I'll want to gush about it. We'll see. But it's a reread for me, so it's not as, it's not like my <laughs> reactions are going to be much different than, or at least they're not going to be as, I don't know, unique because it's a book I haven't read before. But anyway, I'm going to stop blabbering and I will see you all soon. Hello, happy Thursday. It is Thursday, March 31st, the last day of March. Holy crap. And I'm here to do today's update. So, uh, I guess we'll start here. Last night I did manage to finish The Viscount Who Loved Me. This is my third reread in the past couple years. Five stars still. I love it. I love Anthony. I love Kate. This book, man, this book gets me every time, gets me every freaking time. I don't think I showed you. I used my like deep sea creatures bookmark, which is a tab marks bookmark. And I'm pretty sure I've had this since I was like in elementary school. Like, and I got this in like a Scholastic book catalog or with a sticker pack or something like that from when I was in an elementary school. So this is a long lasting bookmark. But, so yeah, five stars, loved it. I mean, I don't really know what to say <laughs> outside of if you haven't read the Bridgertons, where have you been and might as well. It's a really, it's a, it's a good series. What I love about the series is the familial relationships and is, especially with this one, because not only do we get the great familial relationships of the Bridgertons, but Kate, Edwina, and Mary have such a great relationship as well. And I just, I love it. Two good families coming together to make one giant big family. And I love it. But so there's that. Um, what I am reading next, I know tonight I'm going to pick up The King of Fire, and this is the prequel to Blood Air by Alona Andrews. I was trying to figure out what I want to try to pick up this weekend, and it's definitely going to be Blood Air. 
I have a lot of book club and read along books I need to get to in April and that is the one that is due first so I want to get that done and then maybe I have time to kind of do some mood reading before I need to pick up my uh, Sarah J Moss books for the Sarah J Moss read along that's being hosted by Jen from the book refuge and she has a bunch of different hosts but I feel like they're gonna change in and out each each week and this month we're reading the first two books of the throne of glass and then I think the first two short stories but she's splitting them up into two different live shows so but I'll talk about that one um when I read those but I just wanted to mention that I do have those on my docket I guess or on my tbr so I will definitely try to pick up the King of Fire tonight. It is a, from what I saw, it is a short story that's actually for free on Alona Andrews website. And it was written as like a, a fan or somebody had emailed Alona Andrews and asked them if they, you know, what was going on with Kate Daniels, that they missed the Kate Daniels universe. And they were just wondering like what their uh, char what the characters were up to or something along the lines so they wrote like a quick little short short snippet and posted it in their newsletter and then I think it went up free on their blog and then when Blood Air came out they adjusted it so it is now 0 0.5 in Aurelia Rider so I can't wait to pick this up but I don't know if I'm gonna get to that tonight <sighs> but if I read <laughs> the prequel novella I can hit 10 books this month. My reading has slowed way down this month. <sighs> but that's okay. That's okay. Maybe I'll pick up another novella and see what I can do. But we'll see. I might just get completely sucked into Alona Andrews and pick up Blood Air tonight as well. I do have the hockey game tonight. And that starts in about 45 minutes. So pregame will start here soon. But... Yeah, I'll be picking up The King of Fire next. Um, oh, I guess I should say for, and I don't think I said it for the other books I read. Um, oh, oh my gosh, my things are all coming apart. I don't know what's happening. Okay. I'm having issues here. Don't mind me. So I don't think I said for Burn which I read earlier this week, what I used it for. So for Love Has Sprung, I used Burn to cover the updated and redone cover because it does have two different covers. And then I used the Viscount Who Love Me for a uh, favorite author because it didn't really fit any of the other prompts and Julia Quinn is a favorite author of mine. Um, okay, and then for my Taylor Swift quarterly challenge, I used Burn for uh, the prompt for the song Mean, and that was read a book with a mean character or with green on the cover. And there were a couple mean characters in Burn. Bitter exes, you know, bitter exes. And then for the Viscount Who Loved Me, I used it for the teardrops on my guitar prompt, which is read a book you think could make you cry or with an instrument on the cover or in the story. And technically this works for read a book you think will make you cry because it's made me cry in the past, so I knew it was gonna make me cry again. And then we also have instrument in the story. Kate is actually learning how to play the flute in the book. So, I mean, it's not a huge plot point, but She's learning to play the flute, so it's there. But yeah, so there's that. I don't really have much else to update on. I am going to film a little clip um, tonight at like midnight 30. So technically it's April 1st is the new moon in Aries, which is the start of the Zodiac cycle. So I'm going to do this spread from Emerald Lotus Divination. I just, I've just kind of stuck to using her spreads because they just always kind of seem to fit the vibe that I'm feeling. And this is, I like this one because it's very much um, let me put it up. I looked up at it earlier, but I don't have it pulled up so I can look at it here, but yeah, it's very much about kind of beginning the cycle and if it'll load. Okay, here we go. 
So I'll just read the little blurb that she puts. As we know, Aries is the start of a new astrological year. Aries brings us new beginnings and a fresh start. And a fresh start. On April 1st, we will experience a new moon in Aries. This new moon energy in particular is ripe for us to take action, set ourselves into forward motion, and begin on a brand new beautiful journey. So I'm very excited for this. As you can see, there are, it's once again a five card prompt, and I'm sure you can read, but I'll go ahead and say them out loud. The card prompts are, number one is a card to represent the new moon energy. Number two is a new pathway that shines for me right now. Number three is how can I start to follow this path? Number four is where will this pathway lead me? And number five is something I'm leaving in the past. So I think this will be a good kind of new beginnings, fresh start spread. And I'm excited to do it tonight. I was going to use my new Mystical Cats deck that I got. Um which was this one that I did an unboxing for recently, but it has to sit tonight to do the new moon energy because I want to do the new moon energy before I do anything, even a deck interview with it. So I decided to just go back to what's kind of been my go-to deck later uh, lately is the Smoke, Ash, and Embers deck by Three Trees Tarot. I'll link them down below like before. I just love it. It's been a really good deck for me. I've had some really good readings with it since I've gotten it the past month or two. I, can, I don't even remember how long I've had it, but I'll do my little B-roll clip again and speed it up and so you can see the cards that I got and all that. Um, but moving on from that, we'll go ahead and do the calendar real quick and then I'm going to do my tarot spread so I can try to get that mostly journaled and done before the game starts. So yesterday we met up with the king and he tasked us to go out and kind of help people. And then we actually did decent in the court. So, whoa, whoa. Okay, interesting. So there is a thief and a warrior. So it looks like... These are people that we can hire. So let me see what the instruction says and then I'll go back to that. Okay, so these are called followers. Followers provide useful skills on your journey. There's no limit to the number of followers you can have, but you must be able to pay for them. To acquire a follower, you must first pay the higher cost on the page you meet them. At every point you take a rest, you must pay their upkeep cost or they will abandon you. Follower skills are added to your own and you can use them whenever called for. You can double up on the skills you have through followers. For example, if you have an intimidating which gets a plus two and your follower has an intimidating and gets a plus two, you then have a plus four bonus to your intimidate rolls. The exceptions to this are the skills lucky and pickpocket. You can only use those once. Okay, so... We have the thief, which it costs 10 to hire and 5 to upkeep. Locksmith, add plus 2 to all rolls to pick a lock. And then it has pickpocket. Once per page when encountering a non-enemy character, gain d4 in gold. On a result of a 4, lose 1 virtue point. Reminders are noted by this icon. And then it has like a little bag with money. And then the warrior is the same cost of 10 to hire, 5 to upkeep. And he is an athlete. Plus two to all rolls to overcome physical and athletic hurdles. Animal tamer, add plus two to all rolls to train or handle animals. So, those are two that we already have. So, we could hire him and amp up our athlete in animal tamer. That would be cool. Or we can get locksmith, which gives us a little bit more. I feel like, though, with the locksmith stuff, it's a dex roll usually, and we have a really good dex. So I don't know if this is... And I don't really need the pickpocketing stuff. We're, we have more than enough gold, and we have enough that we can still spend gold if we need to on items, but keep some aside for upkeep. So I think... 
I think I'm going to hire the warrior just because it kind of gives us that extra boost in things that we're already good at. So I think I'm going to do that. We're going to hire the warrior as a follower. Although we could hire the thief too because we have enough money and then just not choose to upkeep them when the time comes. Nope, we're not going to. We're going to do the warrior. So I'm going to hire the warrior. I'll get the stats added to my sheet. No rolls. And we are done for today. So I will let you go. And I hope you enjoy this bee clip of me recording my tarot spread. I'll see you soon.
Hello. It never fails. She's quiet. And as soon as I start recording. Can I help you? Anyway. The game just ended. It's about 930. The Avalanche won. 4-2. Sweet. We're at 102 points for the season. That's exciting. It was a really weird end to the game though because... There's like a little scuffle one in the corner and then our like top defenseman Makar was like grabbed by two of the Sharks players and then like two of our guys were in it and it was like a full on one person's in a headlock and then they were and then there were two other guys one of our one of our guys and one of their guys they were just one of them got like body slammed to the ice and it was just like a full on like WWE free for all in the last minute and it was like what the hell is happening? It was so weird. As long as nobody got hurt. As long as nobody got hurt. But anyway. And so I finished the prequel novella. This is the picture they have up on their website. So it's not like a real book cover. But it's called The King of Fire. And according to Goodreads, it says it's five pages. But I feel like it took me quicker than five pages to read. But whatever. And I can't help it. I will be picking up Blood Air tonight. Oop. Shining in my TV screen. Um, I'm not going to be finishing it tonight, obviously. But I will be picking it up tonight. Because, I mean, if I wasn't hyped before for Blood Air, holy crap. So, if you didn't know, if you haven't seen my other... Vlog. So this is Blood Air by Alona Andrews. This is the spinoff series, um, Aurelia Ryder. And it's Kate's daughter, adopted daughter Julie from the Kate Daniels series. And she becomes Aurelia Ryder. So we're moving forward in the same universe, but with uh, Julie, aka Aurelia, as our main POV. And... The short story is she is in Roland's like alternate dimension palace kind of a thing. And she's like chained up and they're kind of talking to her and she is after Molodoc? Maldoc? How quickly I freaking forget. Uh, I want to say it's Maldoc or Maladoc. It's something like that. But he is, I guess, has been around at least as long as Roland, if not longer. And Roland says that while his family line has learned the magic of like controlling power of earth and land, um, these guys have focused on the power of like regeneration and long life. So it seems like Julie is trying to take him out. And Roland's like, you can't do that. The best you can do is dismember him and slow him down and give him a few months to regenerate. So I don't know. I, but there, but we find out that there is a pro prophecy from the seer oracle which if i remember correctly is sienna it's been a little bit since i read kate daniels and so i guess julie and sienna are friends but it's also cute because not curran her brother kate and curran's son He's there and he's like in beast form mode and he's angry because Julie is hurt. She's got a broken rib and so she is pr in, in prison. She's been captured by this Molodoc dude and she's doing it to try to take him out and trying to get intel and stuff in his citadel. And then, but while she's there, she decides to anchor herself to Roland's dimension because that's like a happier place for her kind of a thing. So we do get to see that her and Conlon, Conlon, that's his name, have a relationship because I was super worried because I knew the spinoff was Julie and that it was um, in the future. I want to say eight years. So I was worried that Julie and Conlon wouldn't have a relationship, but it looks like they've both been meeting in Roland's secret thing. 
and then they talk and then they talk and then Roland kind of mentions Era. So it sounds like Julie and Era are still hanging out together and Era has kind of helped task her to take out this Maldoc dude. And Julie's doing it because Julie's able to hide her power and she's a little bit more of an unknown. And Era is like <laughs> super obvious kind of a thing. And then it kind of cuts out to Julie going back to the cell where she's actually being held in. And then it like cuts time and Julie's leaving the Citadel. The Citadel is burning on fire and Era's just like, is everything okay? And then Julie's like, he took my eye. And Era's just like, what? And she goes, it's okay. I have his. And then she opens and so she's got like one glowing green eye and a brown eye. That's how it ends. So I am picking up blood air immediately now that the game is over i'm gonna read it during commercial breaks during my post game shows and hopefully not be up too late too too late tonight but alona andrews freaking does it again i rated it four stars i'm not gonna because it's so short i'm not gonna use it for any of my reading challenge things but I gave it four stars only because it was so short, <laughs> but <laughs> for it being so short, that's really the only detractor for it because it's like a great little snippet teaser <sighs> to get me like ready to jump back in. I should also mention earlier this week, or maybe it was last week, um, Alona Andrews sent out a newsletter that said, I think it was 15 years ago, the first book in Kate Daniels was published, Magic Bites. And then a couple days after that, because they did a really sentimental, sweet uh, newsletter and blog, or maybe it was a blog post. I don't know. I get their blog post in newsletter form, so I get both. <laughs> so it's hard to tell because both come in newsletter for me. But anyway. So they did a really sweet, like, reminiscent thank you to the fans thing for the Kate Daniels series. And then a couple days after that, and I still have it in my email, they sent, like, a short story of Kate out and about and Kern calls Kate and he's, like, asking her to identify this creature <laughs> over the phone. And she's, and he's just like, come on, it's talking to it outside. What do I need to know? <laughs> And I guess it's some person, some creature there that was, like, trying to do something to Conlon. And Conlon just is, like, dressing down this creature because he's trying to kidnap him the wrong way and he's doing things wrong. And it was just a really cute little short little thing in their newsletter. But I love it. I, I love it. As long as they'll keep throwing those little snippets out once every few months about Kate and Curran. I'm happy to take it. But anyway, it's taking me longer to gush about this thing than it took me to read it. But it's great. I love Alan Alona Andrews and I cannot wait to read more. So I'm going to get into my PJs and get in bed and turn back on my post game show. And I'm going to start blood air. And I officially hit 10 books, books <laughs> for March, but that's okay. I feel like April's gonna kind of pick up because I have quite a few read-alongs and things going on. Oh, and in case you also didn't see my Kate Daniels read-along, this read-along is hosted by Heather from Hea Book Two's Booktube, Steph from Novelty Corner, and Megan from Meowth Vader. And they did recently, um, starting at the end of last year, and then we just wrapped it up in March. Yeah, in the beginning of March, we wrapped up the Kate Daniels read-along, so now we're doing Aurelia Writer. And then I think we're moving to Hidden Legacy, but it sounds like we're going to do a read-along of basically all of the Lona Andrews series, which I'm excited for because before I started this read-along, I had only read the first couple books in the Hidden Legacy series. But I know they planned it out so that when we get through the first five books of Hidden Legacy... The next month is when the sixth book is released. 
I think Ruby Fever. And I want to say it comes out in September. Maybe it's October. I don't know. It's like in quarter three or quarter four of the year. But anyway, I'll stop rambling. I will see you all soon. Happy Friday. Happy April Fool's Day. Happy April 1st. Happy Friday. I am ready for the weekend. So, tiny little book update. I did not end up starting Blood Air last night. I got a grand hole two pages in. And then I just got too tired that it took all of my effort to not fall asleep during my post-game show. So, I have not started it yet. And that is what I plan to do here shortly once I'm done filming this clip. I... So yeah, that's it. I don't really have anything else to wrap up this week with. So I'm going to do my calendar and then we'll call it good. So yesterday... Oh my gosh, you have to be sitting in the way! So yesterday we had the choice to hire a follower. I picked the warrior to hire. So now let us see. Today is... Oh no! Oh. Oh, that's right. We were sent to inspect something. Something that fell from the sky. Look at this one. Oh my gosh. Can you zoom in? This top portion looks like the like Wi-Fi symbol. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. Hey. You make your way to the city center where you are told to seek out a strange object. On the main street, there is a small crowd gathered around a merchant's cart, which was destroyed by falling debris. You caution the people to back away so you can investigate. Number one, investigate the object. Roll d20 plus intellect. Can I help you? My goodness. Reminder, arcane adept. What do you want? Come here. And then number two is be cautious of the strange object. Roll a d20 plus wisdom. Reminder, danger sense. And I do believe that we have danger sense. We do. So that'll give us a plus two. All right. Although neither of these are our strong suits, especially the arcane, but... Whatever. We go with it. So, pour my little dice out. My little dicey dice. Okay, so, intellect. It's a minus one. That's 14. So, 13. Could be worse. Could be worse. The result is between 18 and 14. So, yep. And the runes on this stone are glowing. They appear to be from a corrupted source of energy. This is obviously dangerous. Gain a plus two bonus to your wisdom roll for being cautious. Number two below. Cool. So we'll get a plus four to whatever we roll. Okay. So being cautious of the strange object. Ooh, 13 plus four. So 17. Okay. If the result is 11 or more. Perfect. You notice that a sense of dread begins to fill your head as you approach the object. You avoid getting too close until you can assess it better. Okay. Thank goodness. We avoided becoming cursed. However, I am cursed by a screaming kitty. Can I help you? She wants a lap. She's decided it is lap time, whether I'm doing anything or not. Oh, goodness, kitty face. Okay. Oh, okay. So at the bottom, there is a narrative section. We haven't seen that before. So I'll go ahead and read that. You ponder how to bring the object back to the king's wizard, Gregorum the Wise. From your peripheral vision, you see a glowing light coming from the World Watcher's staff. You hold it up, and it begins to pulsate softly. 
The energy inside the crystal is reaching out to aid you. You can't explain how you know what to do next. It just makes sense. You hold out the staff to the channel the arcane energy at the stone. It envelops the stone, which then disappears from the wreckage on the street. The stone is gone. Looking at the crystal, you see a tiny imperfection inside that wasn't there before. The stone is now inside of the crystal and able to be transported safely? What? What sorcery is this? That's cool. That's cool. Awesome. It's, our, it's in the top of our staff now. What? Okay. That's cool. That's really cool. I was not expecting that. <sighs> I love games. I love games. I love storytelling. It's just, I love it. It's so fun. All right. I'm going to wrap up here. <laughs> that was fun. I like that. Okay. So this is the end of week 13. I am going to be picking up blood hair, air, blood hair, blood hair, blood air here shortly. I cannot wait to get into it. I've got my March wrap, wrap up exporting so I can get that up for to be posted tomorrow, which is last Saturday when you're watching this. And then that's all I have to do video wise this weekend. I do want to try to get ahead a little bit and edit stuff because outside of my weekly vlogs, I have most of my the rest of my videos filmed for this month, except for the last one. So that's pretty good. So if I can get ahead, I can get some good reading time in, which is kind of my goal. So, and I only have an avalanche game tomorrow on Saturday. But anyway, you don't need to know this. Here I go rambling. Thank you so much for watching. Like, like subscribe, all that good jazz. Feel free to comment below. <laughs> Let me know if you were as blown away as what happened with that magical staff as I was. That was cool. Ugh, that was so cool. I miss tabletop gaming, but we get our, we get our Jones in with this. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all soon. Bye.